Stevie Fast Jackson, KTR, here with an episode of Holly EFI Q&A. Uh, I've been getting questions through our YouTube channel regarding the Holly Dominator EFI system. So we're going to take some of those today and see if we can get you guys a little quicker down the racetrack. Uh, Jackson Perry, uh, would you be able to go into depth about EFI fuel maps? Um, without your question being more specific as to what exactly you want to know about the fuel map, I'll just kind of go through and show you a little bit of stuff that, that I use when I'm setting one up. Go to open uh, global file. We'll go into your base cals. I've got just a base cal stave, this fast lane one. We'll go into our fuel injector, which is our fuel map. Now, there's a couple different ways your fuel map will look depending on whether or not you're running the system in alpha in or speed density or what you're doing. This setup is in alpha in, so it's just TPS on the left column, RPM on the right column. Now, most people think that that's a fixed number. Uh, with the Holly Dominator, you can go in there and change those axes to anything that you want. So if your TPS, uh, if, you're, if you have a very limited amount of travel on your throttle body and you need to scale that TPS different on the left side, you can just type in whatever number you want. You can make this 61%, uh, whatever you want to do. And then also your RPM. I try to tailor the engine RPM at the bottom of the fuel map to, to work in the range that the engine's going to be at. I won't have a bunch of cells like this base map from 500 to 1200 because generally a race engine like what I run, you're going to have, uh, it's going to idle at a thousand RPMs if it's a nitrous engine, uh, thousand to 1500, maybe 1600 if it's got a lock up. And then below that it doesn't really run. And then above that, it's kind of either on the two step or going down the track. So I will, uh, this won't look like that. I'll have it, you know, maybe 500, maybe 800. Um, and then I'm going to kind of start getting busy with it. You can also use the autofill feature. You can just go to the end of the screen uh, and type in, you want it to run to 10,000 RPMs. And then you want it to fill row values and it'll just populate that. I don't do it like that because I don't like <laughs> uneven numbers. It drives Billy Stockton crazy if I have a, a number right here that says 333 engine RPMs. Like, he will go in there and make that 335 or 340. So I don't use the autofill, but you can. Uh, these numbers up here in the fuel map, these are all uh, pounds per hour. What makes the Holly very simple and easy to understand is it's very easy to calculate this, the efficiency of your engine and how many pounds per hour of fuel it will need. This is the base fuel map. So we're assuming that if this is a NA racing engine, this is what you're going to use to tune the engine primarily. If it's a nitrous engine, this is your fuel map that you're using uh, before nitrous enrichment is enabled. So you go in here, you can also look at this as a, um, as a graph. You can kind of see where the high spots and low spots are. You can smooth it all. You can select that area and smooth it if you've got, if you're building a base, mile from, uh, base, base map from scratch. You can also go in here and select a heat map. Uh, there's all kind of stuff that you can do. Um, heat map colors you can pick. But generally, you want a certain amount of fuel and pounds per hour at idle. The rest of it, generally in this area right here, so just say your car is idling at 1300 RPMs, you're gonna be at zero TPS. This is not a realistic number, this is a one pound per hour. Uh, depending on the engine, I think this thing's set up as a 454, uh, yeah, 454 cubic inches. It'll probably idle at 1300 RPMs on about 12 to 18 pounds of, uh, an hour of fuel, depending on what type of camshaft's in it. So this area in the screen, kind of where I'm highlighting here, is gonna be your idle area. When you're doing your burnout, you're going to be over here. You're going to be 30% TPS. Uh, it'll kind of have to transition here. You'll need a lot more fuel in that area for the burnout than what you would. The only time you'll be over there is in the burnout. Should be the only time you're at 7,000 RPMs and 30% of TPS. When you go to the trans brake, it'll come straight up. Just say you're leaving at 3,000. Uh, your your fuel map will kind of come up through here to 100%, get on the two-step, and then it'll kind of run across the racetrack depending on your RPM range. What you want to do is just make sure that your cells are smooth from one to the other. If you're going down the racetrack and you hit a cell, just say you got 190 typed in a place, Next to a cell that's 130. 
uh, the engine's going to get rich when it anticipates when it goes into the corner of that cell. That's a pretty bright, uh, pretty basic and brief uh, demonstration on a fuel map. Uh, Steve Ario, uh, does it show a lean spike at the launch like a carburetor does? Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about a nitrous combination, but maybe not, so I'll cover both of them. I believe the way I tune the race car that the O2 sensor is pretty unreliable at low RPM. It's so susceptible into where it's placed in the exhaust pipe collector area. If you have an exhaust leak, how much nitrous enrichment you're putting in it, especially with a nitrous engine or a boosted engine. I try not to look at the O2 in the first second of the run. It'll When you leave the starting line, it's either going to spike lean or fat, depending on your exhaust system, camshaft, intake manifold, how much nitrous you're putting in it. And then it's also going to uh, do some crazy stuff, come up and down. And then you'll notice as you kind of quit putting nitrous in it or the engine settles down, it's going to kind of flatten out and then it's reliable. I try not to look at it before a second, but... A lot of times you will see a big lean spike when you let go of the trans brake. Now that thing is going to show lean on the two-step RPM for a couple of, um, on the trans brake, on the trans brake rev limiter for a couple of reasons. One, it has cylinders that it's misfiring while it's on the, the trans brake. So you're going to have unburned fuel and unburned um, oxygen going through the header that normally wouldn't be present. So don't be worried if you're on the two-step and you're on gasoline and you're showing 13 and a half, 14 and a half, 15 and a half to one. Um, it's going to show lean on a two-step. Uh, HD Caprice, can you show the Holly Dominator EFI two-stage plus dry nitrous guys how to go about tuning two or more stages? Uh, very simple. You've got your base fuel map. One thing you need to keep in mind about the base fuel map in the Holly is your nitrous enrichment the way I run it is added to the base fuel map for a total amount of pounds per hour. So you'll go into your nitrous configuration. A um, couple ways to get to it. You can click on the nitrous bottle or you can go find it over here on the left. And you've got your stage one, stage two. I've already selected two dry stages. You can add as many as you want if you want to enable a third. Um, first stage is set up as dry, non-progressive. If you want to progress it, you'll just select dry progressive. If it's a wet deal, you'll have, uh, if you're putting uh, fuel in through a solenoid, you'll have it wet. But since you're asking about dry, we'll just keep it there. Dry, non-progressive. Uh, dry fuel delay, as I've covered before, that's how much time from the time that you let go of the trans brake button to when the nitrous stage is activated to when the engine puts fuel in the engine. So let's just pick a number and say we want 50 milliseconds. Now keep in mind, a millisecond is a thousandth of a second. So that'd be 50 thou delay going across when you're not when this nitrous stage is active before it fires fuel at the injector uh, at the engine. Now the dry fuel ramp is the the slope of that fuel. So if if the fuel from the first kit is hitting the engine too hard and it's killing it, you can put 10 thousandths, 20 thousandths, 200 thousandths delay, and that just takes your fuel flow ramp when the when the engine sees it and lays it over. Uh, it's a nice smoothing tool that we added in V5. Uh, minimum and maximum engine RPM. Set the minimum RPM something a little bit below whatever you're going to have for a two-step RPM, but higher than it would idle. So I normally pick 3,000. Maximum, uh, I shut the nitrous off two to 300 RPMs before the maximum rev limit. So if you have a drivetrain failure, it smokes the tires, it won't knock the hood scoop off in the stands. You can also, this is the first stage, so it's got a dry state. It's got a zero time in the activation. You can also delay that however you want. Uh, and you can have, for novice drivers that I bring in, I'll always put in a stage activation. If I know the car is going to run four flat, I'm going to put in 4.2 seconds and make it to where that driver can't run that thing five seconds under throttle. Um, always do that. Down here is your timing retard. Whatever you want to do with retard, you can... Take out 10 degrees here. If you want to do it in all the cells, just select that. Also, this RPM in this axis is definable in your um, in your nitrous parameters. So you can go over here to your nitrous parameter and set your RPM scale right here. If you want that to say 5700, you can make it there. And then when you go back in your in your deal, you've changed that nitrous axis. So that's how much time it's going to take out. 
uh, in fuel enrichment, you pick how many pounds per hour that you want, and that's over RPM. That scale is definable in the nitrous parameters that I just showed you. This has this kit's got 60 pounds an hour uh, just coming in flat across the board on the first kit. Now, speaking of multiple stages, a lot of guys run their nitrous cars in closed loop, and that's good. That's okay. I don't, if I'm running multiple stages, I don't run it in closed loop on the first kit because of what I was speaking about earlier about the O2 being unreliable. So I'm not going to run this thing to a target air fuel ratio on the first kit. First kit set up, we're good to go, it's set at zero. We're going to go to our second kit. Uh, let's just pick a number, let's say 50. Let's put the same ramp in at 10. And then our minimum RPM, maximum RPM, make sure we get that set. Stage activation, I've just picked half a second. That'd be whatever time you want the kit to come on. Uh, stage duration, my driver's going to try to run it into a quarter mile, so I'm going to set. There's nothing better than when a, you don't tell a driver about this and they're on a good run and they're just going to run it on out the back a little bit and all the kits turn off and their head hits the steering wheel. It's like my most favorite thing. Uh, they're like, I was just running it and the nitrous cut off. I was like, yes, yeah, because you're like a thousand feet down the racetrack. Shut off on the thing, goes to the finish line. Uh, set your time in, we're just gonna pull out another 10 degrees on this, 10 degrees, and there you go. Now, if you're gonna run that thing in closed loop and this is the final stage, that's where I'm gonna hit, you run your closed loop. 14.0, 16.0, that's probably a little lean for a nitrous engine, we're just gonna say we're gonna run it along at 13.7. And when that kit is activated, it's going to override your O2 parameters that are in your closed loop map, and it's going to default to run the engine to that map with the with the plus or minus fuel that you have in the in the closed loop setting. This one's got 60 pounds an hour in it for a total of 120 pounds per hour, and you're ready to rock. You can have uh, up to eight stages. So if you're going to turn on another one, you basically just do the same thing. Um, so that kind of covers that. Visit steviefast.com for all of your Holly EFI, MSD, and race pack needs. We have the new MSD Pro 600 available as a standalone kit. We also have it available as a complete KTR kit that has all of the hardware, components, and technical resources that you need to install this thing on your race engine. In 2020, you can either buy MSD Pro 600 or you can get run over by one. <laughs> Bam!